Hi, I'm your Minna Van Dyken, MD. I'm a surgeon by trade, but my true passion is helping people just like you obtain and maintain optimum health. We've made videos on this channel before about why wearing a mask can be beneficial in preventing the spread of COVID-19. And we even posted a video on how to make your own high quality filter mask. This mask that we came up with is modeled after an N95 and it has very similar components. The links for these videos are in the description below. But what we've not really talked about yet though, is how to clean and disinfect these masks. Ideally, an N95 or similar respirator mask is designed to be worn only once. It should then be discarded. That's a no brainer. And that's what we did as health professionals pre COVID. Now there's a global shortage of masks. With such a shortage, hospitals around the world are looking for ways to be able to reuse these masks. They're forced to find ways to decontaminate the masks and reuse them. We just can't throw these masks away after one use like we used to. So how can we decontaminate these masks and still keep them safe and working properly? 3M, one of the main US manufacturers of N95s, has published a white paper in which they list four criteria that must be met in order for their masks to be reused. One, to inactivate SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19. Number two, not damage the respirator's filtration. Number three, not affect the respirator fit. Number four, be safe for the person wearing the respirator. In other words, it can't have any harmful off-gassing as a result of the treatment. 3M is very clear in that they do not recommend reuse or decontamination of their masks, stating that no method achieves all these goals. That being said though, we're in a pandemic and we have to make do. So what's the best method of decontaminating our N95? What if it's our one and only N95 we have to reuse over and over and over again? Well, let's back up and take a few moments to talk about the construction of the mask itself. An N95 is made up of multiple layers of polypropylene non-woven fabrics. When we were creating our filter masks, we actually dissected the N95 so we could see all the different layers. Among these layers, the most critical one is the middle layer, which is produced by a melt blown process. This layer is anywhere from 100 to 1000 microns in thickness, and it's comprised of polypropylene microfibers with a diameter in the range of one to 10 microns. You can see it in this electron microscope picture here of the melt blown layer. As you see, all these little teeny fibers are melt blown in an arrangement that looks a lot like pickup sticks. This arrangement creates a 3D network that has a porosity of 90%. This leads to very high air permeability. But because these fibers are so far apart, you may think there'll be no filtration benefit. You may think harmful particles can just float through the fibers like water through a sieve. Not so. These fibers get charged into quasi-permanent dipoles called electrodes. So they get an electrostatic charge. Basically, once this layer is charged, it traps harmful particles. These fibers are electrostatically charged as they are created. This charge that they have allows the mask to filter much better without adding any density, without making it more difficult to breathe through. If this is weakened or lost, the mask efficiency plummets. So while the makers of N95s do not recommend reuse or sterilization of their respirator masks, we are critically short all of these masks worldwide. We've got a compromise, which is a whole different issue. We are really just trying to do the best we can do with what we have, which is kind of sad, but true. The CDC has issued some guidance regarding a few methods of decontamination. The six most studied decontamination methods are as follows, in no particular order. One, heat. Two, steam. Three, 75% alcohol or ethanol. Four, household diluted chlorine bleach solution. Five, ultraviolet or UVC light. And six, vaporized hydrogen peroxide gas. Some methods like vaporized hydrogen peroxide can only be done in hospitals or other large institutions that have access to the materials and the required equipment. Please guys, don't try to make vaporized hydrogen peroxide at home. It's actually really dangerous and it can become explosive. UVC light has its own hazards. It's currently difficult to get a UVC machine and even if you get your hands on one, 
the disinfection parameters are very specific. Other methods are just not good for you. They're toxic. They're flat out toxic. Things like a diluted bleach solution, they're not a good idea. While the solution will disinfect your mask, it will also leave a residual toxic gas that you'll be breathing in all day. Ugh. So that leaves alcohol, steam, and dry heat. After reviewing multiple studies, we feel that dry heat or heat with a very specific humidity is the best way to go. Using dry heat will make the mask last longer. However, heat with a specific humidity is better at deactivating SARS-CoV-2. Scientists looked at alcohol disinfection. So while treating with 70% ethanol has been shown to be 100% effective in inactivating the virus, the N95 mask integrity is impaired. The mask just doesn't filter as efficiently and it never fits the same again. It doesn't provide an adequate seal. There's a protocol called the Italian protocol where the mask is sprayed with 70% ethanol. The front of the mask is sprayed 10 times. The mask is then flipped and sprayed an additional five times on the interior. This protocol did prove effective. Currently though, 70% ethanol is very hard to find and thus the protocol is not practical for the average person. So back to the protocol we suggest. It's been studied for multiple cycles and demonstrated that it works well with little to no degradation of mask quality. It can be used to sanitize your mask upwards of 10 to 20 times. So here's all the stuff you're gonna need. First, a Ziploc container. You want a 1.25 quart size container. Second, a convection oven with no direct line of sight to any radiative heat sources which would cause potential damage to the mask. Third, a paper towel. Fourth, water. And fifth, an eyedropper. So here's what you're gonna do. First, you're gonna preheat your oven to 85 degrees Celsius, which is 185 degrees Fahrenheit. Then, you're gonna place your mask inside the container face down. You're gonna cut a 2.5 by 2.5 inch square of paper towel and place it in the container alongside the mask. You're gonna drop 500 microliters, which is a half a milliliter or 10 drops of water onto the paper towel. This will provide the mask with the exact amount of humidity needed, which is about 60%. Then you're gonna place the lid on the container nice and tight. Place the container inside the preheated convection oven. Again, that's at 85 degrees Celsius or 185 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, you're gonna let it disinfect or cook for 30 minutes. Because it actually takes time though to get the mask up to temperature, the total time in the oven will need to be at least 40 to 50 minutes. Then you're gonna take it out, you're gonna open the lid and you're gonna rotate the lid 45 degrees. What this does is it allows air to naturally flow around the mask and dry it out. You only have to do that for five minutes. After that, you are done. Your mask is safe for reuse. So there you have it. What we feel is the safest and most effective way to disinfect your N95 or homemade quality filter mask. Let us know in the comments below what you think of this video. Also, let us know if there's any topics you really would like to hear more about. Until next time, everyone, stay healthy, stay well, and aloha.